Okay. Well, thank you for joining today. Uh, my name is Michael Stone. I'm a senior condition monitoring engineer with RWE Renewables. Uh, RWE is a uh, owner operator of about 10 gigawatts worth of assets uh, spanning onshore and offshore wind and solar. Um, and I'm based here in Austin, Texas. Uh, the goals of today's discussion is to share the improvements we've developed in CMF methods and processes, which will hopefully help you setting up a culture of continuous improvement in your preventative maintenance environment and help set all of us up for a successful future in development of machine learning. As has been mentioned several times in the forum, there's a data revolution going on. What I'll be talking about today is tailored to CMS data and its use, but will be relevant across a wide array of data and how we react to all these data. Specifically, how do we react when we're wrong? To that end, first we'll discuss some process improvements that we've used uh, to capture and react to failure data. And by failure, I mean he here, I mean the failure to correctly predict turbine drivetrain issues. Second, I'll walk through using an 8D process, which is a type of root cause analysis process for addressing negative detection outcomes. Third, I'll highlight some examples of improvements we've been able to make uh, by tracking and reacting to these detection issues. And finally, I'll touch on how classification and this continual improvement environment we'll be discussing will be critical to future uh, AI and machine learning efforts. It's probably worth noting that there's nothing revolutionary or new in here. It's likely all stuff we've been doing naturally in our roles as CMS engineers and involved in the CMS process. This is more about formalizing our processes and providing a platform to capture our learnings and capturing what's really important data to improve CMS processes and on a longer term scale to improve future machine learning efforts you might dive into. Three major changes have been made on how RWE's condition monitoring team operates, allowing for better and more robust data collection about drivetrain failures and more specifically how the CMS team performs in detecting those failures. To be clear, these were not overnight changes. These were really implemented over many years with the final piece coming into place a little over two years ago. So the highlights of these process improvements are, one, CMS analysts have started doing start to finish tracking of turbine failures. Second is a confusion matrix classification, which is an assigning to an outcome of each detection uh, to each of those failures. And finally, I'll discuss the process we put together for reacting to negative outcomes from the confusion matrix as a mechanism for continuous feedback and improvement. The first major improvement we made was an improved issue tracking system. This has directly led better to better communication and transparency, streamlined workflow, and has fostered a continuous improvement environment. Briefly, our issue tracking system is really a developed ticketing system that allows anyone to create a case attach whatever information someone may need to address the issue, supporting documentation, et cetera, and then assign that case as appropriate to whatever team owns the system where the issue lies. From there, further feedback can be provided. It can be reassigned to other groups as needed. For CMS analysts, this generally means that we create a ticket for detection, provide a report and other data, and hand the ticket to a site team to investigate a repair as needed. What has really shifted in this is the CMS analysts have really taken a greater role in seeing these tickets through to completion. They're no longer throwing it over the wall. They are the ones that move the tickets around between site, engineering, and sometimes management as needed. This has had an effect of being of this analyst being much more involved in the entire process. Analysts support the scheduling on site. They support the failure RCAs. They are even providing diagnosis direction and dispositions, which has often been left to the purview of engineering. Review of failure reports by CMS analysts cannot be overstated. Having CMS analysts understanding the exact mechanisms of failure is critical to improving detection in the future. All of this led is, has led to a much greater ownership of site's performance by the analyst. When we miss something, we take it personally. These shifts and changes weren't some mandate from a pie. They were simply developed organically, mostly due to a realization that this has improved communication and workflow, and it has resulted in greater efficiency and really made the environment that was conducive to improving itself. Improvement number two is confusion matrix classification. So these issue tracking improvements have led to an easier way to perform outcome categorization. Each ticket created has a documented prediction i.e. we told the site what we thought the issue was. 
and at completion, every case has an outcome, and we compare it to that to the prediction. Quite simply, if you predicted something would happen and that thing did happen, you have created value there. If you predicted nothing would happen and something did, then you've created a negative value. I think most everyone already does this in some form or another. What's key is being deliberate and thorough about it. And at the beginning of this is and the beginning to end issue tracking is what facilitates this. Without that, you would not have the predicted the prediction and the outcome contained in one place. So with this, it allows us to answer two key questions. Were we right and are wrong in our prediction? And what was the value, positive or negative, in our action or inaction? These answers provide important KPIs in evaluating our performance as a team. Value in particular is critical as you can really identify where you can make the most impact. If you can't, you can't manage it if you don't measure it. Additionally, there are lots of soft costs associated with things like negative detections. Carson mentioned the trust issue in the panel just before this, showing a site that when you do miss something or you are providing too many false alarms, you, ca you are taking steps to improve yourself, and this builds that trusting relationship. These collected data will also serve a higher purpose, as we discuss a bit later on when we're talking about machine learning. Just a quick note on addressing, addressing the human factor of this. Buy-in from your analysts is key, otherwise you may get skew in your data if you start implementing a system like this. It is important to relay that this is not any sort of punishment. It is simply a tool used to get better. And that may take a shift in culture, which honestly may be the biggest impediment to implementation. The third improvement we made involves a reaction to negative outcomes from the confusion matrix. When issues are identified, specifically we focus on missed detections as they tend to be more costly, but really you could apply this to any negative outcome. We run an 8D or eight disciplines process. In case you aren't familiar with it, 8D is a structured problem solving methodology that is somewhat an extension of the typical plan, do, checked, act cycle. It is a bit more formal and more geared to establishing long-term solutions that directly address the root cause. 8D was originally developed by Ford in the late 80s and is now ubiquitous in the automotive sector and across many other industries as well. There's a lot of documentation out there in the world and training available in the world, so I will only brief briefly touch on the steps involved. Step one, team selection. Make sure you have all the domain expertise you'll need on the team. Step two, problem definition. Clearly state the who, what, why, where, when, and how of the issue. Interim containment. This is a very critical step. If there's anything you can do to immediately ensure that you don't have any other misses, please do that. Fourth, the, the root cause analysis. So this is the actual RCA process and really the meat of the process. Step five, your RCA should directly lead to an action or set of actions that solve the problem. Spell those out. Step six, start validating that the solutions you develop actually do solve the problem. Seven, roll the solutions out to the wider scale as needed. And eight, review all of your documentation, make sure everything is tidied up and complete, and congratulate the team to recognize their efforts. All right, this is a little bit of the nuts and bolts part of the presentation. This is delving into a bit of technical detail, but this is uh, actually took us a lot of iterations to get here. So if we can save you some trouble, we'd be glad to do it. Assuming you have an issue tracking system capable of creating parent-child relationships between tickets, managing the 8D process is relatively simple, particularly once you recognize the process can be broken down into a couple of very manageable work packages. First step, make an 8D ticket that will serve as a parent for all of the other tickets. It's simple. It doesn't need any really any info in it at this time other than just a few cursory details. Second step, create a child ticket to contain the first four parts of the 8D. Those first steps tend to be relatively small and time-bounded. The initial steps and the RCA can usually be completed within a few days or weeks, depending on how much time you can dedicate to it. Third step, down the road, once the RCA is complete, create a ticket for each corrective action. This ticket is where steps five, six, and seven will get tracked, a single corrective action and a single ticket. And here's why. Having the corrective actions as their own tickets really allows you for, to do two very important things. 
One, it allows the body of work for the corrective action, the plan, the timeline, the budget, value proposition, all of that to be self-contained because they will cost time and money. You will likely have to innovate to create and complete these. But having them self-contained gives you an easy view to gives an easy view to management so they can perform or assign as necessary, prioritize or assign as necessary. Or honestly, they may kill it altogether, assuming the value proposition just doesn't work. Part two of that is we have a single place to track and perform the body of work required for that corrective action. That corrective action can individually take days, months, or even years. So it doesn't particularly make sense to have them all tracked together. Final step. Once everything is done and your corrective actions are complete, do your review, make sure your documentation is ordered, and store that in the 8D ticket to close it out. One more point for using this method. It allows for the capture of multiple related failures. For instances, for efficiency's sake, there is little value in repeating work. For example, if there is a particular turbine technology with a particular CMS that struggles to detect failing main bearings, you can group these under the same 8D ticket. When all this is said and done, you have a tidy, traceable treasure trove of data that will in be invaluable, particularly once you build up a rich history of these. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of every step, but I do want to cover a few things to watch for in the beginning of the process. Particularly on these first steps, people tend to either get hung up or they gloss through them and don't address them as thoroughly as they should. One, are people in the right, are the right people in the room? Is there someone who understands the nature of the failure so they can help the analysts understand why the failure may have been missed and subsequently figure out how to best detect it? Additionally, people from departments such as purchasing or asset IT can be invaluable in helping trace down issues. Your asset IT might be important if there's data issues and purchasing might be able to help you figure out how to mitigate these types of misses on the back end rather than catching them in the beginning. Part two, document everything. Every little overlooked looked whiff of something out of place. Make sure the timeline of events is clear. Also make sure you are solving what needs to be solved. A lot of these have started with CMS engineers and, and other people trying to figure out why the part failed rather than figuring out why we missed the failure. Part three, this step is often overlooked or glossed over. Don't assume there's nothing you can do quickly. Just Not just what can we do to immediately to prevent further misdetections, but what can we do to mitigate the effects of further misses. Talk now about a few uh, improvements that we've made using this system and having implemented this process. First example we have is that during routine maintenance, site noticed a noise coming from a gen bearing, which they then proactively replaced. A quick inspection of data made it clear that the signals would periodically alarm, but they were weak and would fade in and out. They were never in alarm long enough to trigger an alert to the analyst. So in the short term, the alarm hysteresis was lowered. The completion of the root cause analysis led the team to discover that the gen bearing accelerometers were mounted on the side of some of the generators rather than at the bearing mounts. It was worked out with site to relocate these sensors during their next maintenance cycle. Second example, this is a main bearing that was detected in CMS, but it was detected at a very, very late stage. When site went up to, to inspect uh, where it was at, there was fist-sized chunks of metal missing from the shoulder. So it was clearly at a point of nearly catastrophic failure. This, uh, the RCA turned out that the, the vendor had uh, pushed a software update and that that change log for the software update was not conveyed to the CMS analyst. And that update had affected how some of the thresholds were, were set. Well, more specifically, it, it affected how the signals were calculated and, and brought the levels down compared to their relative thresholds. So the, the, in the interim, thresholds were adjusted, and this immediately led to finding two other main bearings in early stages of failure. And then as a final corrective action, the mechanism was set up to ensure all the analysts received change logs so that they could adjust the, uh, react to any changes in the software as needed. Example three. You got the dreaded call that site found glitter uh, in the filter pot, their metal shavings. Borescope revealed class 4 damage on the planet bearings. 
this this issue turned out to have a, a number of root causes. The more critical one was that the kinematic data was incorrect for the the bearing in the in the gearbox. Thus, the analyst was looking in the wrong part of the spectrum. Uh, additionally, the levels that the the where the spectrum was rising, where the the defect was being indicated, were so low that it weren't affecting the broad based indicators that this system had. Um, so we contacted the bearing manufacturer and got the correct bearing numbers and got the correct kinematic data. We also created a manual detection method, which involved scanning the data directly. And then uh, we are currently investigating alternate methods for indicating that bearing energy um, that this current CMS platform is not capable of producing. So finally, as we increasingly turn digital, we cannot overlook this continuous improvement culture and tracking ability. From the confusion matrix perspective, the overall classifications will remain the same. The possible outcomes will remain the same. Now we simply have more inputs than analysts must consider when predicting. And when there is a negative outcome, you will have now have the AI modeling and training data to consider in your 8D. These matrix classifications will be quite critical in providing data on how your ML models are performing. So when you start to do develop AI capabilities, the transitions will be much easier if these mechanisms are in place well before you develop them. Additionally, and perhaps most critically, having all of these classification and failure data on hand when you do implement any machine learning will be an absolute goldmine as far as training your data for your models. So in summary, beginning to end issue tracking drives efficiency in the detection process and allows for many continuous improvement initiatives. Using the 8D process for addressing negative detection outcomes greatly improves future detections. Any future ML efforts will rely heavily on both prior case data and having a robust mechanism for categorized model performance. So that concludes today's discussion. I want to thank the organizers, Lead Vent, for their invitation to speak with all of you today. I'm glad to now entertain any questions. Thank you. <laughs>